This is an MPTV Makeup News and Update. Makeup news from around the world! This is MPTV's Makeup News. Hello everyone and welcome back to MPTV. I'm Sydney and this is your Makeup News and Highlights. According to The Guardian, it was revealed that what we thought were 2,000 year old pretty pendants with no actual use turned out to be makeup applicators. These were from Roman Britain and a time when makeup was applied heavy and dark, many times using materials like charcoal or soot. English Heritage curator Cameron Moffett said, they were an example of British innovation, a response to the import of cosmetics and the ideas of beauty from the Mediterranean and Roman provinces as far away as Egypt. The applicators were made out of copper and were found in Rotexture in Schwepshire, which at one point was the fourth largest city in Roman Britain. Before the recent re-examination, they were called lunate pendants, but now have been revealed as cosmetic grinders. Some even had loops in it to be carried around the neck. They would mix their makeup using charcoal and a little bit of fat, which made sort of a black paste that they applied around their eye area. Talk about a real smoky eye, huh? Moffat explained, being able to re-identify these pendants as cosmetic sets is hugely important to our understanding of the women who lived and worked at Rotexu Roman City. Because at this time, men dominated this time period, and getting a glimpse at females' lifestyles during it was a huge finding. The makeup applicators are now on display and English Heritage will be releasing a YouTube video showing how they achieved the Roman look back then. Fashion icon and mother of drag RuPaul is releasing a makeup collection with Mally Beauty, which was founded by celebrity makeup artist Mally Roncal. According to Allure, this has been a long anticipated collaboration between the two. The Mally Times RuPaul Color Cosmetic Collection became available solely through QVC.com on September 20th. The pair met over 20 years ago and had an instant connection, which has only grown stronger over the years. So when Roncal reached out about a collaboration, RuPaul said, she embodies everything I love about makeup and the playfulness of it. So when she asked me to collaborate, I thought, absolutely. Their massive collection is about the fun of wearing makeup with shades all makeup lovers should have, from everyday users to pro drag queens. RuPaul explained, these are colors that I wear all the time and they absolutely work. There's something there for everyone. It's fun to play with trends, but you want to keep going back to the classics. There's a lot of fun there too. While we've been seeing an influx of celebrity and reality star makeup lines launching, the world has been waiting for the queen who has paved that way for the beauty community, that being RuPaul. The limited edition collection includes a face primer, eyeshadow palette, liner trio, mascara, blush and highlighter duo, and multiple lip products. So consumers, start your engines and let the best artists win. This year at New York Fashion Week, the runways are seeing much more color and experimental makeup looks. And once again, we have Euphoria makeup artist Donella Davi to thank for the inspiration and culture-wide trend happening right now. According to WWD, makeup artists sent creative liner and bright looks down the runways for spring and summer 2020, from acid green flicks of eyeshadow to full rhinestone face accessories. Angie Parker explained, makeup has become a lot more experimental in New York than it has perhaps in a while. People are experimenting a little bit more with colors and it feels a lot more like what's been happening in Europe. According to E! Online, Helmut Lang had models rocking square cat eyes in multiple shades from jet black to neon pink created by makeup artist Susie Sobel. Christian Seriano wanted models in a more abstract look, so makeup artist Erin Pearson let her creativity flow. She painted metallic silvers, pinks, greens, and blue shades all over the lid and onto the brow bone in a random fashion using Maybelline's Tattoo Studio eyeliner pencils. For Prior Moss, makeup artist Daniel Stallstorm had models strutting down the runway with modern 70s rock looks. He created five different makeup looks using Oma Beauty's Savage Black Magic Palette and a plethora of rhinestones scattered across the eyes. We have entered a new era of makeup and after seeing these thrilling looks walk down that runway, the public is sure to try them out. Last summer, the hit miniseries Sharp Objects aired on HBO. The show left audiences in awe over the gruesome caretaking co-stars Amy Adams and Eliza Scanlans received from their mother played by Patricia Clarkson. Spoiler alert, she's not trying to make them feel better at all, but in fact, poisoning them to death. This led to an excessive sweating and throwing up the force-fed medicine, and this all appeared believable to the audience, which means a round of applause to the makeup team for convincing them. According to Vulture, makeup department head Michelle Radeau and her team were nominated for an Emmy for their work in the limited series or movie non-prosthetics category. So how did they achieve these poisonous makeup creations but make them look so realistic? Radeau said, 
With my particular style of makeup, I never want it to come off obvious. There's nothing worse than watching a film or TV show and the makeup taking you out of it. That's what I strive for, and that's always the most challenging part of creating those looks. You're always trying to make the makeup look invisible. Viewers may look at something and say, oh, that looks like nothing. I bet that's easy. In reality, that's the exact opposite. We're doing many tests. We're testing many techniques, airbrushing, products, what's going to sink into the skin the best. When creating these poison looks, she likes to consider all aspects of the poisoning to make sure it's as authentic as it can get. So how long has the poison been in them? Days or hours? How many times have they been poisoned prior to this? Maybe their body is having a more severe reaction than someone else's would. All of this must be taken into account to determine what makeup application will entail. And for the actual application for these makeups, she explained, essentially it's like any other makeup application. We prep the skin, we moisturize. With Eliza, we do a few layers of silicone makeup to lighten her skin. At her most poison, we lighten her skin by two levels. We use sponges and brushes to blotch it onto her skin in different layers. We then go in with alcohol-based colors and rip sponges with blues and reds to give her skin a more marbleized look. We'd go back in around her eyes with different cream colors and different shadows. We'd add a little bit of sheen too. And since this was a poison makeup look, the whole body would react, which meant applying makeup to the legs, the arms, and the neck. Basically, any skin that was showing would have been affected. Ugh. As we enter into the award season, we must do a recap of this year's Emmy winners from the makeup categories. So, for outstanding makeup for a single camera series, non prosthetic, goes to the great of all greats, Game of Thrones, and the head of the department was Jane Walker. For outstanding makeup for a multi camera series or special, non prosthetics, goes to Saturday Night Live, hosted by Adam Sandler, and the makeup department head was Louis Zakarian. For outstanding makeup for a limited series or movie, non prosthetic, the Emmy goes to doo -doo 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 -doo, Fosse and Verdon, who is led by Debbie Zoller. And last but certainly not least, outstanding prosthetic makeup for a series, limited series, movie, or special goes to Star Trek Discovery, co-led by department heads Glenn Hetrick and James McKinnon. Congratulations to all of this year's winners and the nominees. Way to represent our industry. We're so proud of you. Thank you all so much for tuning into this week's segment of MPTV's Makeup News and Highlights. I'm Sydney, and until next time, respect the craft.